way this was taking so long to, to come back up was purely out of frustration because um, I had this game Crash Team Racing and um, Public uh, all recorded before uh, on the one day and ended up uh, realising that my microphone was not on throughout so there was full day of recording videos and I had no mic so I was basically like a lunatic in a padded room kind of like what I meant no uh, <laughs> just talking away to myself with no one actually listening so I back again so yeah but back again and we're just going through uh, basically what we missed what you missed what Basically, I'm redoing really the whole thing over, which is fun. Yay. Um, what were we doing? I really should have looked up the last week. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We are going looking into... Oh, the hiding holes. The, the hidden passages. The mysterious building that is this building. Uh, just come on, let's go. Darren, where, bro, oh, where, oh, bro, oh, where are they? That's it. The one you know. I, I have the picture of them. Maybe. Anyway. Look at that now. This one fucking got me. <laughs> right. Now, what you want to do for a loose panel? Kick it. Or pick it up. Throw it over here. See, in the head, what you want to make sure in this game is the panel is leaning on the side. The very same like the serial number 9 rocket in the high bay in Boca Chica, Texas, the SpaceX Starship prototype thing, yeah. At Todd's brother's place after the show, there was only a futon to sleep on, so Lonnie and I shared it. The lights went out. I was turned toward her, my eyes started to adjust, and then I could see she was looking at me, too. In the dark, she smiled. My heart was beating so fast. I rolled over. I felt so, I don't know, nervous? After a minute, she put her arm around me and was so close and whispered in my ear, I really like you. I just nodded my head and I really hoped she could tell. I really hoped that she meant what I think she did. I felt like a shook up can of soda ever since. I hope we have the chance to talk before I explode. What a ducky! Yeah, Drawn, I actually had in the other video, I actually took the duck along, so. Yeah, we gotta take the duck along.
Lonnie came over today, but everything was different. She was sitting at my desk chair, and she wouldn't look at me. Finally, I asked her what was going on. She said she felt like she'd done something wrong that night in the city. Like I must think... But I said no, there was nothing wrong. I just wanted to say... But I couldn't find the words. I felt like I was gonna cry, but I wasn't sad. She got up and sat next to me on the bed. I looked at her. Lonnie, do you think you could ever... And that's when she kissed me. It's different now. I mean, we still hang out all the time like before. But now when no one else is around... Well, you know. So you could say we're dating. But it's secret. Secret dating? I don't know. I mean, I guess that's the real difference. Now when we get off the phone, or go home for the night, or it's just quiet and we're alone. We say I love you. So stupid sometimes. I was telling Lonnie that I got into my college summer program thing, and I was all making plans like, you should come visit me, stay in my dorm room. But she said, Sam, I ship out on June 6th. Ship out? To where? She said, to base training. What did you think I was doing all that ROTC stuff for? I guess she's been planning to join the army right after high school since she was like, 12. And I guess she's really going to do it. So I was like, just never going to see you again? She said, let's just have fun while we can. Todd's band lost their singer. Todd said he sucked. Lonnie said he got sick shit. And he was complaining about needing a singer. So, and they were all like, you. And she was like, probably. But she's been rehearsing with them for like a week now. And I finally got to see them play in Todd's basement today. And she's actually really amazing. I feel so proud when she's on stage. It's incredible being in awe of someone you love. So everybody knows it's like a temporary situation till she ships out. But till then, I'm going to be at every single show. There's a character name. RC. Talk is it? Oh, I can't see too. I know. I'd be thunder about it too. Uh, just, 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 look, we've been through so much. And this twice. Well, I've been. We've been, we, we, we've been through this twice, haven't we? Yeah. Oh. Okay. They tell you to stick with the group on field trips, Katie. There's a reason for that. Lonnie and I snuck off on the side paths at Multnomah Falls and got a little lost. 
Okay, a lot lost. Like, for hours. Right before the bus left, we found a trail and came running down the path, soaked and covered in mud, shouting for the bus not to leave. The school called home. Mom and Dad said, you didn't get into trouble like this before you met that Lonnie girl. But I don't think they know, no, about us. The kids at school, though, I'm really afraid that's a whole other story. Stick with the group, Katie. Stick with the group. Yeah, that's why I am the ducky. Gotta stick with the group. Not this group. This is me and Ducky's group. <laughs> I don't get Lonnie sometimes. Like, her band, and our zine, and her hair, and everything are all anti-authority. But I watch her in JROTC, and she's doing drills in perfect formation. Following orders, no question. And there's all this stuff in the news about don't ask, don't tell. Like, she's going to join the army and then have to... lie? About who she is? She said, they don't need to know what they don't need to know. Like it was no big deal. This from the girl who trashed her locker to, like, defend my honor. I've learned when to stop arguing, though. I don't think Lonnie even gets Lonnie sometimes. Some strange person like come in. I mean, we're just didn't take the toilet paper, like. We can't be having that. That's why we brought the horse seat on. <laughs> See, I'm the clever one. I'm the clever boy. Oh, yeah, I had an interesting talk with mom and dad tonight. One you were never gonna need to have. I mean, you've known, right? I've known. I've known since, like, she -Ra. Mom and Dad didn't, I guess. But they saw the zine and the stuff on the locker, and they were like, is there something we should know about you and Lonnie? And so here's the thing. I was prepared for them to be mad, or disappointed, or start crying, or something. But they were just in denial. You're too young to know what you want. You and Lonnie are just good friends. You just haven't met the right boy. It's a phase. That's what I didn't see coming. That they wouldn't even respect me enough to believe me. Well, joke's on them, because they're in for one very long phase. Really, really taught them like it back there before this <laughs> weekend. Um, but yeah, Carol was a little better. Carol, 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 how are you, Carol? Uh, okay, congratulations, Janice. Uh, we can talk to you. say congratulations, because come on, you're going to take the job, right? What are you waiting for? A great invitation, call them back. But in the meantime, let's discuss this little outing you had with our favourite flannel-clad flannel clad hunk. What a blast. But you sound like you're reading a lot into an instant night out. Or is it? 
don't know. Uh, you showed us something there. You say he has an out of town girlfriend. You're in. You're one. You oh you're sure they're not serious. Okay, so we have to figure out when we we'll see each other next in person. Enough with the letters. I owe you. I can uh, that word. Margarita, boss lady, so love card. Ah. Wee. <coughs> Daniel, where in the wood are they? Sorry, they were on adventure, or <laughs> but they went to the oh, that part of the woods and it got dark. Daniel said, "Are you are you scared?" So he said, "No." a ship, a pirate ship, and an ash on an ocean, or it, <laughs> so I just said I'd be the captain, and you'd be the first here, then you said, but I, oh yeah, you captain, and you went on the version, and started sailing, <laughs> Daniel finally came over to get his game, I'd been dreading it, but he brought this story with him that I wrote when we were little, I started reading it, and then there I was, crying at the kitchen table. He asked what was wrong, and I was thinking about how we used to be friends, how much I'd taken for granted. But instead, I told him about school, and Dad, and Lonnie, and then how sorry I was that I wasn't his friend anymore. He gave me a hug and said it was going to be okay. And for some reason, I almost believed him. Lonnie had her go to with her band tonight. She's so incredible on stage. When she was singing, I could practically forget everything. That we only had 48 hours left. That I don't know what comes next. That I can't live without her. Then she dedicated the last song to me. And I couldn't take it. I was out on the curb in the alley, sobbing till my ribs hurt. I would follow her anywhere, Katie. But I can't. Where she's going. After a long time, she found me. She said she was sorry. She said, I wish things could be different. I just wanted to make you happy. I said, I don't think you can anymore. <laughs> the Rick, the ranger, yeah, and the old-time girlfriend who, who was apparently not, they weren't being serious, apparently they were serious enough because they get married. Uh, yes, something? Yeah. I'm, gu I'm guessing it's the fifth. I know what it says at the start, but yeah. The start of the game. Where's the dog? Where's the title on? Plenty, plenty, plenty. Then there was 
told him he misses and he knows it. Fuck it. We agreed our last night together would be our happiest ever. And we'd forget tomorrow was going to come at all. It worked for a while. We had a good time seeing Oscar off. Then ran up to the attic to look through our photos. To find one for Lonnie to take with her. And looking at them, I realized they were all in the past. And there wouldn't be any more. I didn't know what I was going to do. And I cried. And she held me. She said she knew it was hard, but life would move on. I said I didn't want my life to keep moving without her. That's when she cried too. I was so exhausted. I must have fallen asleep like that, in her arms. In the morning, I woke up, and I was finally alone. Honey snacks. Ah, yeah. You know that when you eat them, you're cool because the guy's getting cool, so he's kind of cool. You know, for winners, I didn't even see that. That's cool. The sunset light in this house is the saddest thing I've ever seen. I just want to sleep. When I'm in the attic, it almost feels like Lonnie could still be here. She's just downstairs. I'm just waiting to hear her pull down the hatch and come running up. Maybe I'll go up to the attic and wait. Katie, uh, I fell asleep in the attic, in Lonnie and my old spot, and I missed the first two calls. I just barely caught the third one before the machine got it. And it was Lonnie, on a payphone. She'd been on the bus to basic, and she said she couldn't, she couldn't think of anything but me, and us, and that she couldn't go through with it, with the army and being a part, and all of it. And so she got off the bus in Salem. She said, Sam, I want you to pack up everything you can and get in your car and come find me. And let's just drive until we find somewhere for us. And she asked me if I could do that. And I said, yes. Yes. Oh no! Katie, uh, I'm so sorry that I can't be there to see you in person, that I can't tell you all this myself. But I hope as you read this journal and you think back, 
that you'll understand why I had to do what I did. And that you won't be sad. And you won't hate me. And you'll just know that I am where I need to be. So much, Katie. I'll see you again. Someday. Love.